Hello, my soul-seeking friends. It's Shanna. Thank you so much for listening to Sense of Soul podcast. Enlightening conversations with like-minded souls from around the world, sharing their journey of finding their light within, turning pain into purpose, and awakening to their true sense of soul. If you like what you hear, show me some love and rate, like, and subscribe. And consider becoming a Sense of Soul Patreon member, where you will get ad-free episodes, monthly circles, and much more. Now go grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Today, back with us, we have Phil Webster. He is a writer, actor, and spiritual teacher. He joined me last year to tell me about his book, Letting Glow, a profound personal account of his experience with grief in losing his mother in 2021. He invites the reader to join him on a journey of exploring our connection with our higher consciousness. And today he's joining us to tell us about his new book, Glowing Deeper, where he effortlessly blends the mystical into the everyday practical. His book includes meditations and the history of the esoteric ancient beliefs and ceremonies. And since I've met Phil, I've become very fond of him and I can't wait to share him with you again. So please welcome Phil Webster. Hey. How are you doing? I'm super excited to see you again. How have you been? I mean, where, where have you been? Yeah, um, yeah. Where have I been? That's true. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, you know, strange year. Like, randomly went to Iraq. Uh, I, well, we talked about it, right? Yeah, randomly went to Iraq on uh to shoot a TV show for um five weeks, just prior to the current situation in the Middle East. It didn't touch whereabouts I was, but there were like echoes of it edging towards where we were. So uh, I kind of took the initiative and got out of there a week before I should have done. But we finished filming and everything, so it was, oh, you know, okay. it was fine. But yeah, it was quite an adventure getting out of there. It was like literally running for the plane, that kind of scenario. But oh my anyway. gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was, there was some confusion around visas and stuff. I'd, I'd overstayed my visa and the production company said they'd take care of it. They didn't. I got to the airport. They're like, well, yeah, we, you can't go. And I'm like, no, I'm going. And it was it was like down to the wire, you know. The thing was, so there was an American airbase next to the airport wow. getting repeatedly attacked by drones during that week. So nobody was killed. A couple of people had minor injuries, but... My concern was that if they kept attacking the American airbase, and this was kind of like independent terrorist groups, essentially, the airport might get shut down, which had happened before, before I'd ever gone there. And then I'm like stuck there for longer. So I just kind of got out of there where I could. And, all, you know, overall, it was a positive experience, but I was happy to get back to London. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you hear about things across the world and mm. you're so far from it that you don't yeah. really fully understand yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not definitely not going to pretend that I had any experience, anything that, you know, the, the horrific things that have been going on lately. And it was really the week I left was kind of the week that everything kicks off. And I was in Kurdistan, I must admit that. So far, they've they've managed to sort of keep, a, keep out of the whole thing. But they do have a lot of enemies around them because they're trying to be independent of Iraq, but they're still part of Iraq. Iran aren't fans of them, Turkey aren't fans of them, all that. So all, all this stuff I didn't know before I'd gone there. So I kind of learned about it very quickly and yeah that it i gotta admit like the sort of attitude from people just walking down the street because uh, i kind of stood out over there and then, like everyone was super polite and then all of a sudden they weren't like during wow. that lap, like people kind of pushing me out of the way and stuff like this and i was like oh so there was a stuff. shift in, ch- yeah. in energy. yeah and and i was thinking i'm just imagining it or what but then um a colleague of mine that was working on the same tv show in his he's in his 60s and he was like, it's probably time you go. You go. It was like, I've seen things escalate out of nothing, you know. He's been there his whole life. Like, yeah, all right, I'll take your advice. But yeah, you know, overall positive experience. People were really nice. And I learned a lot more about acting than than I used to. Yeah, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it was intense. It was intense, you know. And uh, I, I've yeah. also should mention that I was in this place called Herbal Citadel, which is mm. allegedly the oldest citadel, sort of a continuously inhabited citadel like in the world. So like from ancient Mesopotamia and where they believe that spiritual writing first came from. And I was like, well, how weird that I'll end up there. You know, not, not that I feel like I'm any <laughs> great spiritual writer or anything like that, but it was just kind of a weird synchronicity. And I was there and, and it was a really interesting place. You know, it was kind of like an old castle and wow. it was just kind of built on this mound that they just kept building on for millennia. So it's just kind of like this big hill with this, uh, this structure on top of it. And I got there and I was thinking, well, am I going to like, you know, touch something and just be transported to the Black yeah. Sea or something? 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, uh, but nothing. I didn't get anything from it. But somebody pointed out to me, you know, who knows? You know, like uh, maybe whatever I learned there in a spiritual sense might might come later on. Oh, that's so, it's so amazing. I know when you had told me that you were over there at the time I was reading like the Sumerian text and yeah, right. I remember now. Yeah. yeah I was totally in a deep dive with all that stuff. So uh, I was fascinated. Sure you, know, you know more about it than I do. That's for sure. You know, yeah. I was uh, reading I, the script. I would have loved to. Yeah. I told you to like go sneak and take some pictures of some ancient relics or something that it's crazy too, because, you know, you think about all of these places that are so ancient and so holy and tell so much about early civilization and possibly even how we came to be. Mm, and mm. they're having war and destruction in some of these yeah. places and it's heartbreaking. Yeah, no, it is. And and it's all, I mean, it's, all, I, it's beyond my understanding, you know, of course I, you know, we're, we're all hearing about it and I don't want to be ignorant of it, but at the same yeah. time, it's kind of, it's difficult to see it, isn't it? You know, um, yeah. It's like, oh, really? Now we're still still doing this, like in in twenty twenty four. But yeah, yeah. I yeah. Know. How have you been? <laughs> I've been good. I've been, you know, I you know, I kind of feel like what you just said. Like, I don't want to be ignorant to mm-hmm. you know all of the negativity that's going on, in wars, and even with America. And but then in the same, I'm trying to just stay in my own space and kind of mind my own business and and continue to yeah. work on you know, my own journey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just listened to your podcast on genealogy. I found that fascinating. Firstly, because I've always been obsessed with New Orleans. I've never been there. Oh, so cool. all the guys are talking about all around that and that yeah. you're from there. And all, oh, wow, this is like really deep, you know? Uh, I, know. I didn't even pretend. The only reason that I'm like fascinated with it was as a kid and then all through my adulthood, I read all of Anne Rice's books. Oh. And she, she described the place like so beautifully. Well, you know, that's because you live there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was just like, I, you know, always thought that I'd get around to visit it at some point or before <laughs> now. Still have Well, but, uh, I'll meet you out there and I'll give you a tour. Yeah, please do. Yeah. yeah. No, I'd love to go there. I really would. You know, and, I have a story about Anne Rice and the house that she lived in. Yeah. I want to say was, well, it was right across from this place that my mom went to school. It was called, well, back then it was the Ursuline Nuns Convent. When my mom went there, it was the St. Mary's Italian School. Okay. And next door to Anne Rice was a house that I had found that I had ancestors that lived in. Mm. And I learned about the story of the king's daughters. This is so fascinating. So when the men were sent over or those first boats that Mm. went over from France to the port of New Orleans, those very first ones in like 1700s, there was more men than women, of course, because the men were building. And so, and as they built and start to expand and colonize, they didn't have enough women Mm. to, you know, continue the population to have it grow. And yeah. so the king was like, well, I'll send you women. Okay, and yeah, you mentioned that. I heard you mention that, yeah. It's so crazy. But but the story is, is that they came in at night and it had taken two months to travel and they were pale and hungry and you were lucky to live if mm-hmm. you even got over the transatlantic. Yeah. And so they get over here and they arrive in the middle of the night and all of their luggage were in these pine boxes and they lined them up the Mississippi River. And the nurse line nuns took them in and mm. bathed them and gave them clothes, you know, like white gowns is what it yeah. was said. And then they let them kind of like explore because, you know, they'd been on water for so long. Mm. So all of a sudden, the men or the people of New Orleans that were there see all of these women out of nowhere in the middle of the night in their white gowns yeah. and their long pine boxes lined up on the Mississippi. And that's where the rumor of vampires started. Really? All right. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Never, never heard of that. No reason why I should hear that other than being a sort of vampire geek. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really interesting. Never heard that before. You can see how that would, you know, they'd be walking down the street. Where the hell did all these women come from? And where are those boxes that are like yeah. that? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 They're walking around like- the night. Like yeah. their coffins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. But, but yeah, so I just really, really enjoyed that episode. I've always struggled finding out any history of my own. 
Mm. in terms of uh, family and heritage and stuff like that. So yeah, I found it really interesting. I've sort of gone through the, I think I went through 23 and me or something like that. And then yeah. it just stopped, you know, I mean, I mean, I can see all these, you know, people going in every direction, mostly in America, actually. <laughs> yeah. But, but I tried to sort of track down my father's lineage and he was adopted, right? Well, right. the last time I spoke to him, I was 18. He'd right. never met them. So he did track down his dad, but his dad was a soldier from the States who met an English woman and that's how my dad came about. So he went back to the States. My dad actually tracked him down. I think he used to get like a birthday card like every year yeah. or something from America. So he went over there and he was like, okay, nice to meet you, but I, you know, I've got a wife and family and all that stuff. But anyway, yeah, this woman that I got in touch with, she was just seemed ultra suspicious of me, you know, and I was like, I'm not after anything. Oh. I just would love to know where I originate from, yeah. you know, um, but that was the end of it. They didn't, didn't keep up the correspondence. Anyway, yeah. So interesting. You know, I've had people on my ancestry.com hmm. contact me. One in particular, this young man, he just had his first child, you know, young in his 30s. Yeah. And he said, you know, I, I was trying to figure out how we were related. And he's pretty closely related, you know, hmm. like second cousin, first cousin, second cousin. Right. And we figured out, you know, he was adopted. And so it was much like that. But mm -hmm. I connected him with his sisters who were also adopted. I mean, it was just actually a really beautiful story because they all end up connecting and, and meeting and became kind of family. But he didn't really connect with his parents so much. But with his siblings, he did. Mm. But you located them then? or Yeah, I helped them all oh, wow. find okay, each nice. other. Yeah, it was really, really a beautiful thing. They Yeah, it is. Yeah. And they're my cousins too, right? That I never knew existed. So, and I still keep in touch. You want to hear something so weird is one of them looks almost identical to me so really? much, like more than my own children. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. No, I've got, I've got a, you know, all this family out there and, uh, and that's it. I feel, well, you know, I've got a few cousins and stuff and, and for, from my mom's side, but um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hear that sometimes and I fear it for myself, how life changes so much when, when both of your parents are gone. Mm, mm, yeah. 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 It does. I mean, that's actually three years this week then since my mom passed. Um, oh, sorry. Which like, oh no, thanks. It's interesting, you know, like, cause there's always, you know, the first, the first Christmas, the first <laughs> anniversary of her passing, uh, her first birthday, my, all, all these firsts, you know, that, that first year. And then, and then for me, the second year, it was still, uh, still stang, you know, this one, I feel like it's now it's like, all right, I can do this. The, the anniversary of passing just came around and, you know, I was like, all right, I, I'm, I'll acknowledge it, but it wasn't, you know, this outpouring of just, you know, sorrow or anything like that at this yeah. point. It's kind of, three years on, it's kind of like, all right, well, it yeah. is what it is at this point, you know, so, um. Yeah. It's not, it, you know, grief is so weird. You know how they say it comes in waves and it's so true because even mm -hmm. I had a moment last week about my dad. I just super sad. It lasted for days. And there's one point I was laying in my bed and I was, it was almost like, I don't know if you've ever had an anxiety attack, but yeah. like I couldn't okay. shake it, the grief. And it just, it was so painful. And I remember like tossing in my bed a little bit going, I can't, I can't shake this. And it's so mm. uncomfortable and it's so painful. Mm, mm, so it was really yeah. weird. I mean, that's been almost eight years. Right. I expect that it'll um, hit me every now and again, but it, it's just yeah. uh, that, that first year I just really like crawled into it. I got to a point where I just felt like I, ca I can't physically cry anymore. There was, there yeah. was just I was like, this is too much. I can't, right. I can't just carry on like this, you know? And, and I yeah. think, now it kind of, you know, I feel it rise and then it's like, no, mm. I, I'm not done enough of this now, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. Of course we all experience it in different ways and, you know, no, no way's the right way, I guess. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's got to deal with it. And, and, and I suppose just get used to it. I think that's, uh, yeah. that's what it comes like down to. Like the new to. norm. <laughs> yeah. Like using words like easier or better don't feel, don't feel correct, but I right. think you just adapt and sort of mold yourself around it is there but at some point it seems that you have to get on with the rest of life right there's a kitty cat <laughs> locked outside the the living room like she's she was just going nuts a minute ago yeah she's <laughs> just better and then she's still circling me so i'm just like no oh, oh. <laughs> well since i've had you on last you've wrote two books yeah well yeah one more <laughs> 
and in the process of uh, process of writing the third one yeah yeah wow that's amazing yeah yeah you read the second one right yes i thought that did you not send me some of the third oh you did you sent me I a did, little yeah. bit a few little things because you've had such synchronicity yeah i mean that the, the I, I guess we should be talking about the second one but that like yeah. my mind was the third but one, even right? in the second one lots of synchronicity right right yeah it's yeah it's a I felt like so the end of by the end of writing letting glow I, I felt that I'd learned so much about mediumship spiritual practices in general that I didn't really know anything about before I, I've got so much to learn still but I felt well you know by the time I finished it I felt like I'd, I was kind of light years ahead of when I started it you know so right. I just had this whole other stuff that I wanted to talk about and and just going back to grief as well kind of when I finished that first book after my mom had passed away when it ended, then I was like, okay, shit, now I'm like, now I've got to deal with this again, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was, the books came initially through grief, but I was learning all these amazing things that it kind of helped. And then I just felt like, okay, I've got to share this with people. And then, yeah, like you say, you know, kind of a lot of amazing experiences, kind of mystical experiences that never really taken much notice of before, you know, and until all this stuff around my mom passing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I'm writing a book too. Mm. And, you know, you actually helped me in many ways decide that I was going to do a trilogy because, right. you know, I felt like it, my the process of, of what I was learning was never ending. So yeah. this book was yeah. either going to be like a Bible, like a huge yeah. ask, and it was stressful thinking of it that way. Yeah, and, then, so when you it, and you've got a deadline, right? So it's all it has. I know. Oh, I love Neil Donald Walsh so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. What was it? May? D did you say or something? He said May 1st. Yes. I'm sorry to just sweat as you say this. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. But you know, the task is a lot less when I when I kind of took the pressure off of ever having an end to this mm. first book because I felt like it was never going to end because I was constantly evolving and growing and still receiving. There was still so much more. Like it wasn't, there was no end to it. So I felt like the book was going to go on forever. But I guess that's kind of like with life and this journey. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I sort of had a opposite experience with that in this last year since, you know, I wrote the first two books back to back. And then, and then I got caught up in the sort of publicity of the first book and, you know, doing talks and, and a few workshops and of course podcasts and, and, and all that kind of stuff. As much as I, I enjoy this process, it kind of took me away from sort of, and, and of course I've got to do bit, this and that, you know, bits and pieces, jobs here and there to, to pay the bills. So it kind of took me away from, you know, the sort of more creative side. And I'm like, where's the where's the third book you know i'm like i'm i just wrote two back to back where's the third yeah. one you know and then when it started coming through well I, you know I, I just started writing actually uh right at the end of my trip to iraq finally enough. and then i was thinking okay so here it is but now as it's as it's going on i feel like it's not part of that actually i feel like it's something else on its own so yeah i feel like this is this other one now is turning into something else entirely i mean yeah. it's very much connected to it you know it's, it's still my right. story but yeah it's it's crazy how it's working out yeah it's divine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's something yeah I don't yeah. know what's going on I mean it's so strange there was like in the second book in Glowing Deeper you know there were little bits again and, and even with the first one that I believe I didn't write and then there were second uh, in some parts in the second one that seemed to be like a, a conversation mm -hmm. like brief little bits and then this third one it's just it's just all me having a conversation with something so it's like, wow. I'm like right, am I going nuts but I mean you know obviously I'm not the first to to do this we're just talking about Neil Donald Walsh and others before him and after him but it's interesting because I'll test it, you know, I'll be like, I know that I don't know these things, you know. Isn't that so crazy? That's it's that's nuts. the whole thing that is so remarkable in my journey too. I'm like, I could have never came up with this shit on my own. There's mm. just no way. Like yeah. Shanna does not think this way. I don't, yeah. you know, I've, I have no background that would explain some of the things that I've received. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it exactly. Like I know that I don't know that stuff. It's smarter than me. Is right. As <laughs> like if I try to if I try to talk about it, I can't talk about it. I, I can write right. it, read it later. But if I yeah. try to talk to you about it on the fly, I'm I don't know how to talk about that stuff. <laughs> you, know, so. I, you know what? I have the same, especially when I'm talking to like scholars about certain things, right? About like history and stuff. It's like. Well, I'm not sure about all that, but mm. I'm. This is what I received, and when they tell me that these things like, weave right. together, 
Yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, that's just incredible. That's just weird. Yeah. Like I did not know that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm sort of, I put up a bit of a fight at the start of it. And now I'm just kind of trusting it and seeing, let's see where it goes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're finally, you're letting glow and now you're um, so, yeah. deeper. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That's the journey. You, it's almost like when I have to go back and read and edit the beginning of my book, mm. it's so far from me. And I think you had expressed this too, that you are so far beyond that now. Yeah, so you're like graduating with each book. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I've definitely still got so much to learn. I'm just starting a new circle because cool. I haven't really been sort of actively sort of developing mediumship and all of that stuff. So yeah, I feel like I'm just starting. It's like day one again, uh, studying with a, a lady that actually sort of helped inspire all of this called Claire Broad. I, I wrote about her in both books. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the first medium. That I, I read some of her books and then I went to a class of hers and and now going to be in her circle. So yeah, I can't wait for that. Wow. Um, yeah, I feel like it was kind of you know I, I've I've been in other circles along the way. I've met other mediums, but I feel like coming back to Claire that it's like all right now I can you know sort of get on with this properly. Yeah, full circle joining her yeah. circle. <laughs> yeah, that's it. that's it. So how much of what you're receiving today is connected to? just being aware because I know you were saying you were busy and it was taking you away from that my personal opinion you know knowing you and you have a really good way of making space for yourself I don't <laughs> right yeah yeah I mean I suppose again I've caught up got caught up with stuff I've had to like I say do this and that you know random jobs I'm trying not to commit to anything I'm tentatively thinking about how to do, maybe do an online circle myself, something like that, possibly make a bit of money working within where I'm heading, you know, but in the meantime, I'm just doing sort of menial jobs. So I suppose the benefit of that is that I can sort of uh, pick and choose where I can make time for myself. I think one of the themes of letting glow or both books was, uh, and, and sort of in answer to your question now is again, I talk about it a lot, but stepping back from your thoughts and sort of making that space that, you don't get caught up in all the all the madness of everything that you're getting bombarded with and you sort of can detach and be the observer or the backseat driver or whatever term you want to call it and be in that awareness. And I feel I might be lucky that I find it sort of relatively easy Yeah. to be able to just take a moment and it comes quite easy. Do you crave it in some way sometimes? I do, but I also am guilty of uh, forgetting, you know, forgetting to do it or get caught up as we all do in, in all everyday stuff and then when I take that moment I'm like oh yeah of course and I was hoping to do it before our conversation but I've been running everywhere today but yeah I think that's what the key is and and yeah the, the third book is very much about that there's some stuff that again that that I've learned through it that I haven't read elsewhere but it's essentially reciting pretty much what we're all talking about you know about just yeah. all we've got is now we can create our own reality I mean I'm not you know, invent, reinventing the wheel here. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, we need to take time for ourselves and, and each other. And this it seems to be the overall theme through all of these works, right? You know, from 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 all of us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. So, you know, it's so funny because oftentimes when I feel that things aren't going, you know, smoothly or maybe don't, I don't even realize they are, you know, because I'm so busy or whatever. Yeah. I realize that it's it's truly just me in my own way. You know, I'm yeah, creating exactly. the chaos and allowing it. Yeah. No, same with me. You know, same with me. Or every time, actually, when yeah. I slow down and look at it all. Yeah. But in terms of, yeah, just kind of creating that space to get into that awareness, I feel like possibly relatively lucky that I can just pretty much turn it on and off at will, I think. I don't know if that's through perseverance practice or what we talked about before last time when I uh, I was telling you about having that possible psychotic break. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. I, just, I don't mean to, I don't mean to dismiss, <laughs> uh, you know, anyone that does have a, have a, have yeah. a, a go through anything like that. But I thought I was going insane. I, I thought I wanted to check out of here and then I looking at it from a different angle. Thankfully I met the right person that said, no, 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 this is an, uh, this is an awakening. Maybe a psychotic break and an awakening can potentially be the same thing. I'm definitely not qualified to say, and I'm definitely not dismissing mental illness, but I feel like after that very profound experience that I went through for for a year, the better part of two years, I felt like I came out of it able to just sort of tune into the moment and just just sort of focus like on the constant moment of now, you know, which which is just blows your mind when you start going into all of it, you know.
Oh yeah, for sure. And you know what? I've, I was just, I would say that also equivalent to that mental shift. There's also sometimes pain a decade ago at was what kind of put me over. So I think it can come yeah. in many forms. Yeah. You know, I guess that's being multidimensional. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. I, I feel like I'm coming back to that again and again. And I, and I kind of didn't want to make that thing, but just going back to that moment of now, that seems to be my message for all of it. You know, the mediumship is fascinating and, you know, I will continue developing it, but I feel like it's turning into more about the experiences um, that, that I'm able to share and and that one seems to resonate a lot because that whole connection with the moment of now thing is is so crazy. You know, it, it just goes off into stuff that I feel like I'm not qualified to talk about in terms of quantum physics and timelines and like crazy stuff that all just comes from you know being able to connect with this moment right now. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm sort of learning about it all the time, even though I went through what I felt was a horrific experience of being trapped in the moment of now some years ago. I sort of put that behind me. And now it's like, here we are again. I'm just thinking about that, writing about that a lot. Hmm. You know what I'm wondering now? You know how a lot of times you hear of people being stuck? And I know a lot of people who are stuck. I wonder if that's similar, you know, of what they're experiencing. I suppose the variables of it. I mean, this, again, just, just talking from that experience, I wasn't caught up in kind of worrying about this and that. I, I truly felt detached from myself, looking at my own thoughts. Yeah. And and but it was like thrust on me really quickly, and then and it was just like now, 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 now. Couldn't switch it off. I couldn't think. What am I going to do tonight? What did I do yesterday? Right. What's happening next week? It was kind of like, what the hell is this? Like, where did that moment just go? Like, this is insane. Uh-huh. Like, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, I started reading sort of scientific literature and sort of came to the conclusion that nobody actually knows what's going on. You know, um, <laughs> just these theories. There are sort of traditional theories of of the timeline that we all, you know, agree upon, and which is clearly a thing because we go from A to B and and we can look at the past and have a shared past and all the rest of it. But then there is the only way that we're experiencing everything is actually just now all the time. So if there's only now all the time, then anything's possible, right? (laughs) You know, it's crazy. Like, and I don't know if I mentioned this, I might have in the last time I had you on, but your experience reminds me that now, now, now reminds me of when I was doing the small dose of mushrooms. Of microdosing, yeah. Microdosing, yeah. there you go. I felt like I couldn't get out of the now. Mm, okay. I couldn't think about hours ago and I couldn't really go forward. Everything yeah. was just so very present to me. And yeah. of course, I wasn't trying to reject it. Or that was intentional. So if it just came on like that out of nowhere... Right. It was it was like somebody had spiked me essentially. I just woke yeah. up, had the thought, and then something just switched, and and I was like, whoa, and just flew into a full blown panic attack. Tried to walk it off. Thought, okay, I tried to drink it away. I tried to work out at the gym. I tried to do everything I could to be. Right, distracted. you went to therapy, didn't you? And told your therapist. I, well, yeah, I went to two doctors that said it was psychosis. Gave me meds. Meds yeah. didn't touch it. I took sleeping pills, and I would wake up and it would just all start all over again. It, it, it was kind of horrific. You know, people talk about being in the present moment as this beautiful <laughs> thing. It, but it was, yeah, yeah. But it was like the, the polar opposite of that guy's experience. It's like the oh, oh, and I oh never God. read that book. So actually I'm not. I oh, read. that is the best. You've got to. That's one of the best books. It really yeah. But I guess we came to the same conclusion, but like um, in very different ways. And through meditation, I kind of sort of came back online or, or offline, depending which way you look at it. A few years down the line, I, I seem to have can appreciate what actually happened, you know. Yeah. So did are you the one who told me to read that book by Victor Frankel? Don't think so. I'm not sure the, the man, name. Oh, maybe I told you to read that book. Maybe. <laughs> this book is about being basically in the midst of the absolute worst chaos, if you can imagine, in the concentration yeah. camp. Yeah. But I want to say he was a psychologist. And he was using these tools, you know, to get through this. Yeah. But oftentimes, like if I am in a room of like, you know, a bunch of negative people or even just too many people and there's Mm. so much energy going on, like the best thing I can do is like put myself in this bubble, you know, protection, like wrap myself. I like imagine myself like being wrapped up really quickly, like (laughs) Mm, mm, mm. like a superhero (laughs) wrapping (laughs) myself up in this protective bubble. Mm. And it is like this 
strange mental state. If we could become more accepting, like if you would have been, okay, I'm going to accept this now instead of rejecting it, not because you didn't know what was going on. It happened so Mm. abruptly. But Mm. I mean, I bet there's lots of different mental states that we're faced with like that, where if we had the tools and knew what to do. I've thought about this as well, because uh, like I I sort of relate it to going into this huge panic, you know, whenever whatever happened, happened. And and I and I have thought, you know, well, would being in that state and that and what felt like the purest state of awareness and where to the point where I personally seemed like absurd, you know, my life seemed absurd, everything around it. There was just now this is all there is if I could have tapped into that, like you say, in a different way and just sort of accepted it and then sort of been like, okay, I want a million dollars, you know, like what's going on, you know, (laughs) could I suddenly start manifesting like crazy or something? I I, I don't know. Because I mean, I, I mean, I didn't just know to wrap myself up. I mean, of course I had horrible experiences prior to that when I didn't know what to do that put me into panic. Yeah. I live right across the street from a, a train station, relatively quiet street but just around the corner it's like people just getting on and off trains yeah. and I often use the place as a shortcut and when I first moved to this this apartment that we're in now I would be in a great mood I'd go across the street cut through the train station and I'd be like damn like what the hell what's the matter with me now you know what I mean and and um oh, mm. somebody pointed out they were like stop cutting through the train station you're just picking up this mass of yeah. people that just just like pushing past and everyone's in a hurry and this and that and you're just picking up on everyone's energy like out of nowhere mm-hmm. and then it puts you in a bad mood you know um and and then yeah that person was telling me about putting a protective bubble around yourself like when you're kind of in those sort of overwhelming social situations yeah i call it my unfuckwithable bubble it's <laughs> <laughs> a good name yeah i'm not sure if i could repeat it like without (laughs) (laughs) my best friend mandy one time oh my god we were laughing so hard it was on a podcast when she was my co-host she said it's like putting on a condom (laughs) yeah yeah that 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 works too i mean i guess it kind of is visualize it yeah yeah (laughs) yeah you can visualize all kinds of things i mean i i laugh sometimes you know because you'll run into people and they're in a bad mood and you're like i haven't i I haven't even seen you or sir i don't know you (laughs) you know whatever it is and i've always said you could just put flames in front of you you just right in front of you visualize them (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. you should just like step out here in london at eight o'clock in the morning People are on oh, their way to, wow. it's like a horrendous, horrendous yeah. way to start the day. But you know, I mean, the energy of the world is, it's got to be affecting us, even if it's not consciously, you know, affecting you, it's affecting, you know, it's like, it spreads kind of like how COVID did with fear. Yeah. I think, I think it all works like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. We're in some weird times. And so that's why, I mean, what is your hope with, the, with your second book, Glowing Deeper? With going deeper. Yeah, I, I just feel that just kind of wrote what I would like to read. So it, it very much focuses on mystical aspects and, and history. Like I kind of wrote a, a sort of brief history of the esoteric. I say, That's right. like, again, there's so much, you know, if I was going to read a book about mediumship and, and ghosts and paranormal, as well as continues my kind of own grieving journey. This book's less about me and more about the bigger picture, I think. But I just thought I'd have some fun with it and throw this whole section in the middle about sort of like Celtic rituals, uh, witchcraft. Uh, I remember shaman. reading this now. This was a while ago <laughs> yeah. that I read this, but I'm but now I'm remembering and I appreciate yeah. all of but that. But yeah, what you mentioned, you mentioned, so I, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going off track a little bit. You mentioned about the whole New Orleans aspect, you know, that I was like, oh man, I'm, I totally missed a trick there, you know. <laughs> to, to I was talking about witchcraft in, in Europe in the 1200s. Um, it went on for a long while. I, I, I forgot about the whole sort of voodoo side of things as well. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. would have tied nicely into it. But anyway, just kind of all these things came about and then just looking into spells, tarot cards, astral projection, mm-hmm. anything that I thought would be like interesting to somebody that would might read a book about mediumship at the end of the day and just kind of just try to touch on as much as I could. And again, I was learning about these things as I wrote it, you know, so it was just yeah. kind of just like the excitement of getting it all out there. I remember doing the rosary with my mama and Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with the, you know, and I know you didn't grow up like that, you know, receiving no, no, that. No, I didn't but- never. You know, we have all of these little sayings and and rituals. They're rituals. And he had brought to me that, you know, that's a spell. 
Mm. You know, when you're saying, you know, our father or whatever, these are all like spells. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That Yeah, that's something really interesting as well that I kind of sort of came up with when I was learning about witchcraft, you know, and talking about spells in general, just sort of essentially what what are they? They're kind of like affirmations in a way, right? We're, yeah. we're talking about the reality that we want to come from these words that we're chanting or it's kind of setting this thing into motion, which you would would like to happen i feel like there's so many so many similarities in in many of these things and yeah that's that's interesting like you say it, it's crazy like and again when you sort of break it down and you think about the power that are in words themselves as well but then the power really comes from the perception of it right like, like what the what intention yeah so i had this uh, circle a while back and we we're talking about like the garden of eden and how you know eating from the tree of knowledge was going to give you this knowledge of how to discern whether something was good or bad. Mm, But mm. what I think is good or bad, Phil, you may see as something totally different. And so, you know, across the world, especially, we all know on a small scale, what's right and wrong, what's good or bad. But as you move out further, what I do may be totally, you know, evil to somebody else. Yeah. Especially like just having been uh, going back to that Middle East kind of thing. Um, Yeah. So who's like right that. or wrong, you know, in, in yeah. some way? Yeah, yeah. Really nobody when it when it comes to that. Yeah. I always look for the, the etymology of a word may mean. I think I might have told you that the word heresy actually means choice. Did I tell you about that? I'm I mean, that's, sure. that blows my mind. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, so heresy was such a bad thing. I mean, you could die for it, you know, if you, you know, talking about even like the witch trials and stuff like that, you, you know, anything know. outside of this little bubble mm. and that it was the choice. You, mm, mm. you could not have choice. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Yeah. When you, when you talk about that, that whole section of my book on, on witchcraft is talking about heresy as well. Yeah. Around the 1200s, there were these group of, there weren't nuns, uh, begins, I think you pronounce it begin. They were kind of almost nuns without the complete devotion to the church. And they kind of started talking about this very, well, how we talk about spirituality today of this, you know, sort of all embracing God rather than the agreed upon sort of Catholic version uh, up until that time. The notion of the self being connected with the divine, the universe, the all that is at an intuitive level rather than following religious doctrines. And essentially the church called that heresy and, and, yeah. and the burning people at the stake. Um, they burned the nuns. Yeah, well, they they weren't nuns. They were called begins. They I don't sort know of. That. Yeah, they. I hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. I believe it's. I believe it's just like we would say begin, um, but it's spelled kind of like G U I N E S. Um, but yeah, they they would associate themselves with with monks at the time, and and one sort of, I don't know how entertaining uh, the idea was, but the one one part of what I wrote in Glowing Deeper was these monks who were associated with the begins. They were they were kind of in separate quarters, right, in these hmm. monasteries where they stayed. And some of the monks started complaining about having erotic dreams. Mm. And essentially the first culprit was, well, it, well, it's them begins that are talking about, you know, spirituality for all. And, 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 you know, we have this all loving God that's sort of, you know, and they were the first ones to get the blame. And I believe, I mean, I, I, and other people have their inter- interpretations about this, but that really sounded to me like the very beginning of, of the witch, you know, of course, the, right. the, the witch is talked about in the Bible as well. But yeah, you know, the, this kind blaming of blaming uh, the woman for the woman just for being yeah. feminine. Yeah. And and then one of these ladies wrote a book and self-published it essentially. And and people started taking notice of it. And she got burned at the stake. Yeah, in Paris. I would have been burned, Phil. So sad. <laughs> they say like over two hundred thousand women accused and burned. Yeah. And one of the craziest things that i found through this was that witchcraft the witchcraft act as they called it and that was essentially people hunting witches you know which yeah. which went on a lot and of course in, in salem and, and all the rest of it wasn't abolished in the uk until 1951 wow. which is nuts again right i mean no one was actually doing it by that but it still existed until the 50s yeah it's oh like, my god isn't it it's like 20 years before i was born you no know, like, wonder i remember doing some ancestry for someone, you know, who was in Salem. And I actually talked about it in that um, episode. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this woman in her papers, because you can actually read some of the court papers of the Salem witch trial. I mean, 
literally it was it said she had soap making materials right right yeah I'm like that was yeah. one of her offenses yeah yeah like I'm you're definitely. reaching <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's yeah it's horrific it really is so yeah. it kept us small and it kept us from going deeper you mm. know into our intuition into that now into that space well, that's it. We'd be, I mean, me too, you know, we, we, we'd be burned at the stake, you know, like me, anyone that yeah. said we could talk to dead people or, or, or any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kept that stuff to yourself back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a shame too. I mean, I had one time somebody tell me that I was promoting evil because I promoted self-love. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's a new one. I mean, that's a pretty narrow way to look at things. I'd say I've had a couple of people on, I mean, I, I'm not really much of a of a TikTok person or anything like that, but for the for the few things that I've posted on there, I've had a couple of interesting responses to that, like messing with stuff you shouldn't mess with and, and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. I've heard that too. Isn't yeah. that so sad? They're so conditioned by all of these things that obviously held great fear, you know, mm -hmm. I guess, but it, mm -hmm. it is passed down in us. And yeah. so I think that's one of the reasons why when you do come to have this awareness that you're more than a meat suit, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you think, is this psychosis? Is what is this? Like your body, your mind mm -hmm. starts to reject, you know, what it's been trained to do for generations. Even though I'm 100% all in with this, I'll catch myself still being skeptical about most things, you know, I've seen mediums at work that have been amazing, you know, and then a few days will go by and I'll be like, Did, yeah. you know, is that conditioning or, or what is that? Or is it just sort of natural? Is that our inherent way to look at I, I, I don't know, you know, but it's like I kind of don't buy into everything just because it's a spirit, something spiritual, but I feel like it's my sort of natural state to to question everything. And I wonder what that's for, where that's from. I wonder if that is from conditioning, like yeah. you say, just, uh, yeah. How I, things I think I do up. that too still. In fact, yeah. I had that not too long ago. And you know what I decided to do is I, I decided to just say whether or not that's their experience. Well, yeah, that's it at the end yeah. of the day. You know, either people were like, okay, and quietly just didn't mention it after they read it or people loved it. You know, there yeah. were like, some people even said one of the best spiritual books I've ever read. But anyway, <laughs> it was very divisive, you know, and all I can do is say what's happened to me, what's worked for me. Yeah. What, what's opened up to me and and you know this is the way that i've gone on to sort of um explore it and and right. these are the things that have happened along the way but I'm, I'm definitely not trying to convince anyone you know um yeah but but interestingly you know like a lot of the stuff that i wrote about five years ago i'd have been like nah i don't think so you know um so uh, <laughs> i get it why people are skeptical yeah, oh, yeah. Until you, until i would have thought it was nuts i would have been like that girl is crazy <laughs> right right yeah, I would have. I mean, I was so conditioned, you yeah. know, I just I've always been one of those people who just wanted to do it as I'm told and be good and do all the right things. But it was never for me, you know, all of the that being mm. was based on other people's beliefs, conditions and yeah. the system. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't have the religious upbringing that you had, but just I, I feel like I received an insight through writing this third book and i was like god that makes so much sense whatever was coming through whether it's me or a guide or, or what have you but I was just talking about how i i kind of had this oppressive stepdad stepbrother all that kind of thing and how i just made myself a lot smaller to make him feel more comfortable you know and there's something i'd never even thought of before i started writing this book and it's not really like stuff that i'm harboring or, or sort of carrying around like you know i sort of i believe that i dealt with that stuff a while back but i was like yeah i never kind of thought of that in that in that respect that's all huge. these things yeah like in a similar way to sort of conform into religious upbringing or something like that i just kind of like put this stuff away to make this dude feel more comfortable about himself you know and then i yeah. noticed that would follow through with any kind of authority especially male authority mm -hmm. through my life i would always kind of put myself in the back i'll be like oh no no i'll let them take charge you know this is yeah. just to keep the peace you know to not sort of step yeah. up and say well no this is what i think i'd rather just let somebody else take the reins mm -hmm. until recently yeah but yeah, I, yeah you know what's interesting too is i think that a lot of these things even if you're not brought up 
in religion, mm. there's it's still so very generational. You know, yeah. it's coming through the generations and people are breaking from that. But a lot of it does root back to all of that. Yeah, yeah. No, that, Which I think you saw, you know, in your book when you were going through, you know, researching the esoteric and all of the mm. the heresy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd be really interested to sort of learn more about past life trauma, all that kind of stuff. People are talking about it a lot lately. I've sort of dipped my toe in it, but yeah, that, I, there's a lot that I need to learn about there. Yeah. yeah. There's more, there's more, you know, yeah. <laughs> all around it. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, and you're, it. and you're, you have such a beautiful voice and I love your meditations that you put out. And when you're reading your book, I love that you do that. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. The, the guided meditations I really enjoy doing them. Like I've done a, given a few workshops and, and talks and people seem to come like have a lot of good feedback about med the meditations in particular. Yeah. Thanks. But yeah, hopefully I can expand them into sort of longer ones and I, and I really like the idea of sort of like a guided journey you know that, that really works for me at least yeah for sure I you know when I was first moving into this this world this new dimension that I'm in I really had to be guided I mean because yeah. I could not turn it off for myself yeah 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 no I still use them I still use other people's like I'll listen a lot to a medium here called Gordon Smith he's got a lot of good guided meditations yeah Claire Broad as well she's got a few on youtube yeah it, it's it is such a helpful tool you know to sort of cut out the the rest of the noise you know guided meditations they they definitely make mm -hmm. it so much easier to if you're especially if you're starting with you know to learn about meditation yeah. yeah well i'm so glad that we've connected so that we can have these kind of conversations and you you've definitely become someone who i'm fond of and and i love our friendship so you too absolutely no thank you yeah i really appreciate you and thank you for the kind words about the books and and i'll definitely continue to send you more bits and pieces of what i'm writing at the moment because I, I really value your, your opinion on them especially yeah oh. yeah well, thank you very much. You've helped me as well. And tell everybody where they could find your beautiful voice. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> so, so that's, that's a very, very limited, uh, maybe I should say exclusive. <laughs> All right, well, we want more. We want more. <laughs> yeah, on my fledgling YouTube channel and same on TikTok. Let him glow the book on YouTube, probably on TikTok as well. Otherwise, I'm Phil Webster with two L's and philwebster.com and then Phil Webster on Instagram. That pretty much covers it and then the books are available in all the usual book places barnes and noble amazon of course and yeah anywhere that you can think of yeah awesome well when you're ready to do the new orleans tour let me know yeah. and i'll meet you <laughs> yeah. no i'd love to have you been to london uh, before no i would love to though it's definitely on my list and i would love to meet gavin so yeah, yeah. i would love to eventually you know <laughs> For sure. Thanks so much, Phil. Have All a right. good night. You too. All right. Take care. Bye. Sweet. All right. All right bye. bye. Thanks for listening to Sense of Soul podcast. And thanks to our special guests for joining me. If you want more of Sense of Soul, check out my website at www.mysenseofsoul.com where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one or help support Sense of Soul podcast by donating to my coffee fund. Thanks for listening.